Welcome back to another episode of Behind the Muscle with me, the Gorilla Chemist, Chief Science Officer here at Blackstone Labs. And today we are gonna to talk about a product that I'm super excited about. It's called Glycolog, and it is a nutrient partitioning product. Now, if you don't know what that is, I'm gonna explain it to you throughout this video. Uh, but first, I need to go over a few terms so that way you can kind of follow along. This is gonna be a little bit of science, but I think I can convey it pretty easily for you guys. So, insulin is our best friend or our worst enemy. It's the most anabolic hormone in the body. Uh, it's responsible for bodybuilders competing at 280, 290, 300 pounds now. They all abuse insulin. Um, it can also be your worst enemy because insulin is a storage hormone, meaning it can store fat or it can store carbohydrates and amino acids. So depending on diet and timing and uh, other factors depends on if your body's gonna be storing fat or if it's gonna be storing muscle tissue, as in glycogen and amino acids. So let's talk about insulin for a little bit. So what does insulin do? Well, let's go to the positive size. Insulin increases the storage of glucose and amino acids in the muscle tissue uh, it increases glycolysis, which is the breaking down of carbohydrates for energy. It increases glycogen synthesis. It increases total muscle protein synthesis in the body. Uh, it's responsible for the uptake of certain ions. Uh, potassium and phosphate are two of the big ones. And then some of the things that it, it doesn't do, or it actually uh, stops from happening or prevents is uh, Gluconeogenesis, which is the formation of glucose from amino acids. Glucogen lysis, which is the uh, breakdown of glycogen into individual glucose molecules. Lipolysis, which is the breaking down of fat cells. Ketogenesis, which is the formation of ketone bodies. And proteolysis, which is the breakdown of proteins. Now, I kind of starred the ones that are, for bodybuilding purposes, are beneficial. So. Proteolysis uh, is breaking down of basically muscle tissue. So one of the things insulin does is it prevents the breakdown of muscle tissue. So it's very anti-catabolic, uh, which is why it's also used, not just because it's very anabolic, but it is extremely anabolic as it up, uh, increases uptake of glucose and amino acids into your muscles. So that way uh, you increase total body protein synthesis. So I'm gonna go over how insulin works in the body. Uh, it's a little scientific, but I'll do my best to make it as easy for you to um, understand as possible. So if this is a cell here, um, I is for the insulin and G is for glucose for reference. I will get to all the other symbols in a minute. So insulin binds to the insulin receptor here which causes uh, multiple steps of these little p's are phosphorylations. So it changes, once it binds to this enzyme, it changes its structure in 3D, and then it binds to the insulin receptor uh, substrate here, and it goes to this pathway, which is PI3K. Um, <clears throat> once it activates this pathway here, you now can stimulate this kinase, which is protein kinase C. And what that does is it stimulates GLUT4. Now GLUT4 is a transporter which is required for glucose to go into a cell. Uh, glucose cannot diffuse through a cell, so it needs to be actively transported across a cell. So this process here is called translocation. So once this uh, kinase is activated, uh, it, it translocates GLUT4 over to the actual cell membrane where glucose can now enter inside the cell and then it can go into many things one of which is glycolysis now insulin also does another a couple of other things so it activate once it binds to the insulin receptor substrate it activates this pathway also which is the akt protein kinase b now this part of uh, the pathway is responsible for glucose disposal, glycogen synthesis, and total muscle protein synthesis. So this is kind of where we want to be, right? We want to build muscle, we want to store glycogen, so we're pushing the pathway this way. Um, if you notice up here, this uh, PTB1B, okay, that is a phosphatase enzyme that actually 
prevents the activation of these pathways. And so if this is active, then this is inactive and none of this response happens. And a lot of times that is the case if somebody has uh, insulin resistance versus being very insulin sensitive, meaning that they don't utilize glucose very well. So this pathway will completely negate anything going on here. So now what I want to do is talk a little bit about the ingredients and then where they come into play on this entire pathway. So the first ingredient that we use is uh, Genema, right? So this, this is a plant extract that mostly has been shown to like increase insulin secretion. And then by doing that, you're, uh, you can bring in glucose inside the cell and into your blood to be burned for energy. So uh, it's been shown to reduce fasting blood glucose levels and uh, postperennial blood glucose levels. So that way, like after you eat food, it'll help uh, the clearance time of glucose inside your body, which is beneficial because if glucose is just floating around in your body, the chances are that if it's in your blood and not being cleared, it could be more, more stored as fat than utilized for uh, energy or for glycogen storage. Um, we used cinnamon extract, which is very common in a lot of products, but this is a very, extremely high potent cinnamon, cinnamon extract. It's a 25 to one polyphenol content. So most insulin, uh, I'm sorry, most cinnamon supplements are about four to one, maybe a 10 to one if you have a good one. I searched a lot and got this one, which is very strong. And, in, and cinnamon has a couple different bioactive polyphenols that are responsible for helping with the insulin process. So uh, cinnamon can actually activate this process right here, like this PI3K part of the uh, cascade without insulin actually working. So this is, you can actually mimic insulin without having any carbohydrates and cinnamon can do that. And so it, by activating this pathway here, like I said, it'll do, um, it'll do the translocation for GLUT4 as well as everything that we want, glycogen synthesis, muscle protein synthesis, burning of glucose for energy, all of these things. Um, cinnamon has another key thing that it's super important for is uh, this enzyme here. So cinnamon will block this uh, phosphatase that we spoke about before, which inhibits this enzyme. So not only are we secreting insulin uh, and making the pathway active, we're also blocking the enzyme that's responsible for deactivating the pathway. And this is all without the use of insulin. So this is actually really cool. So the second ingredient, no, the third ingredient that we looked for was uh, R-ALA. We used the sodium salt version, so uh, R-alpha lipoate. And the R version is the active version isomer of this compound where the S version uh, has a bunch of problems, including like polymerization and things like that. So the R is the one you want to look for inside a product. Now, what that does is it uh, potentiates this process here. So not only does it increase insulin receptor substrate phosphorylation, it also increases the phosphorylation of this pathway. So uh, by doing so, it increases all of these things such as glucose disposal, uh, glu uh, glycogen synthesis and muscle protein synthesis. So RLA is basically making your insulin better. Uh, it's almost like using more insulin. It's a more, using it way more effectively than if it were on its own. Um, <clears throat> it also does go down the uh, PI3K pathway as well. So it facilitates um, the translocation of GLUT4 as well. So you'll be able to bring more glucose inside of your cells when you're using RALA versus if you just had uh, insulin from your body alone. So right now we are increasing the amount of glucose we bring into the cells and how efficiently we're using it from our ALA. And the studies have shown that it can actually bring in as much glucose and then dispose up to 89% more than if, if it were without it. So it actually has pretty good data behind it. And like I said, all of these things that we're using are to increase insulin sensitivity, which just means utilizing insulin more effectively. The last thing I wanted to talk about uh, with uh, alpha lipoic acid is it does one interesting thing. And so insulin, like I said, can also store fat. And so how we make fatty acids has to do with the breaking down of glucose, which goes to glycerol. 
And then when you have fatty acids that are inside your bloodstream, they'll combine with uh, ACL-CoA to make uh, triglycerides. RELA actually blocks the enzyme that connects glycerol 3-phosphate with ACL-CoA. So that way you're not making any triglycerides by taking RELA. And so you have less of a chance of storing any of these things as fats. Uh, everything should be derived more into your muscles. Um, <clears throat> the next one I was really excited about is berberine. Now this Berberine has been around for a very long time and a lot of companies use it. The main problem with berberine is its bioavailability is really bad. It's actually super poor. So what we did is we sought out a berberine cluster dextrin complex. So basically we have the berberine molecule and it's encased in this cluster dextrin sugar molecule that allows it to get inside of the cells uh, without being uh, destroyed and it also brings it into the receptors more effectively uh, than if we took it on our own. So it was uh, cool that we have this whole delivery system that not a lot of companies utilize because it is uh, more expensive, but here at Blackstone, we want to bring you the best stuff. So berberine does a couple things. Uh, it's To start off, if you look up any studies on berberine, and one of the main things that comes up if you Google it, it says berberine and metformin. So metformin is a prescription medication that they give to type 2 diabetes uh, for non-insulin dependent to help lower blood sugar. And the data that berberine has is comparable or better than metformin. Now I can't make that claim on a product, but if you look at the studies, the data is there. Berberine is like a super molecule. Um, it uh, blocks the PTP1B pathway which we talked about which uh, inhibits all of this from happening which is a big problem with insulin resistance. It increases um, the uh, formation of IRS which is insulin receptor substrate and activates this pathway. Um, again all of these things are now super upregulated with berberine. Um, it also does something different which the other compounds that we talked about haven't done yet. So berberine activates this kinase called AMPK. Now AMPK um, does a lot of things, one of which is energy regulation as well as the uh, GLUT4 expression. So now we're bringing more glucose into the cell but via a different pathway than RALA and cinnamon. We're actually, so now we have two different pathways of bringing more glucose into the cell as well as now we're talking about um, energy regulation. So berberine is a very important compound for a lot of reasons and I'm pretty excited about um, this because it's one of the best partitioning agents that you can get. It helps your body control uh, lipid metabolism as well as glucose metabolism. Um, <clears throat> we used chromium um, polynicotinate which is this one here and chromium has been around for a long time. It's Data is good for a certain extent. However, I found this really cool study um, with the specific one we're using that I wanted to talk about for a little bit. And this was, they didn't really know how chromium worked. They had anecdotal evidence that it, uh, sometimes it controls blood sugar, sometimes it doesn't. Um, but this study showed that there is two parts of the insulin receptor. So there's the part that insulin binds to and then there's this, this active pocket here that they didn't know exactly what bound there at first, but it's actually chromium um, that's attached to uh, in organic molecules, so small organic lightweight uh, molecules. And so when chromium binds here to the insulin receptor as well, they say that that's like super activated insulin receptor. So everything is working much better. The study showed that uh, it was it increased the effectiveness of the insulin receptor by threefold and when this is fully activated uh, eightfold uh, better insulin use versus the placebo so that's pretty cool that they finally understand how it works and I thought that we if we're trying to get as much insulin use as possible to drive everything to your muscles. We want to get the strongest stuff and the best stuff out there. So I'm really glad that we found this chromium that actually binds to the receptor and does everything so much more effectively. And then the last molecule that I want to talk about is bitter melon. And uh, <laughs> bitter melon 
is also another super compound. It's been studied for <laughs> since the dawn of time, really. Uh, there's over 140 studies alone on just insulin and bitter melon. It does a bunch of other things, but we'll talk about that at another time. Uh, it's also known as the vegetable insulin. Um, in other countries, they used to take the bitter melon fruit and actually grind it up and make it into uh, an injectable like oil. And they use that as insulin. Uh, instead of, you know, we have recombinant insulin you get from a pharmacy, they were using bitter melon to do this. And it actually worked really well. Um, and that's, <clears throat> and the reason for that is there's a molecule in there called polypeptide B, uh, I'm sorry, polypeptide P. And that works basically the same as insulin. It activates the same cascade as, uh, as normal insulin does. So I thought that that was interesting in of itself. So bitter melon also, besides act, uh, increasing insulin and uptake of uh, glucose and amino acids to increase mu uh, muscle protein synthesis by activating AMPK, which is the same thing that berberine does, so it does energy regulation and uptake here, it also blocks gluconeogenesis, right? So gluconeogenesis, as I said before, is the breaking down, I'm sorry, is the you're breaking down of amino acids to build glucose. So in essence, your body is taking protein or your muscle tissue that you worked so hard to get, and it's breaking it down to make glucose when there's not enough. So bitter melon actually prevents that by blocking two of the enzymes towards the end of that process, so that way that there's no gluconeogenesis going on and that you're using insulin more effectively and you're not, and that's kind of where the proteolysis comes into play. So it's not breaking down muscle tissue as much. Um, but it also activates PPAR alpha and PPAR gamma. Now these uh, are complex enzymes that we don't really fully understand how they work. A lot of diabetes medication is now being targeted towards these because as does AMPK, these enzymes also are responsible for energy regulation. So if we can control the amount of glucose you use and burn at a time, as well as uh, lipid storage and lipid oxidation, then the, the more that you have with body composition as far as you're, we're utilizing everything more effectively, your body is now going for storing glucose. And so besides bitter melon increasing insulin uh, secretion and going down both of these pathways, as well as activating AMPK, which is responsible for the increase in uh, uptake of glucose and amino acids. It also does another thing. It actually blocks the enzymes that are responsible for making glucose out of amino acids, which is called gluconeogenesis. So your body will break down muscle tissue when it doesn't have enough glucose, if your blood sugar gets too low, in an effort to make glucose so that your brain can continue to function. Well, bitter melon blocks uh, two of the enzymes towards the end of that process so it actually prevents gluconeogenesis from happening so that way you're you're getting less muscle breakdown so which is something that we all want that we're trying to partition all of our nutrients here so that directly to our muscles and it also in a, a recent study shows that it activates uh, ppar alpha and ppar gamma now these enzymes we are still trying to figure out how they exactly work, but a lot of new uh, diabetic medications that are coming out are targeting these, these enzymes and because they're responsible for energy regulation as well. So not only is bitter melon activating and uh, help control energy regulation through AMPK, it's also doing it through these two enzymes here. So the point of all this is that if we can balance and maximize the amount of glucose and uh, proteins that we're getting inside our cells as well as minimizing uh, lipids and increasing lipid metabolism, you know, that's a win all around, right? And so when we put this product together, I tried to maximize all of the possibilities and all the pathways how we can utilize insulin to your advantage. So this product is meant to take with a high carbohydrate meal. You can eat more carbohydrates because your body is now utilizing insulin more effectively as well as secreting more insulin as you eat them. So the, all of the same, this pathway will be activated, this pathway will be activated, and importantly, this pathway will be blocked. Um, so now we're talking about increases in uh, glycogen storage, glycogen synthesis, 
uh, increase amino acid uptake, all the things that you want, all the positive things that insulin brings to bodybuilding is what we're trying to do, as well as uh, could be an effective weight loss tool based on we have it um, <clears throat> controlling two different pathways of energy regulation. So with all of that, I thought that this is a very solid uh, nutrient partitioning product. There's not a lot of whole, there's not a whole lot of these on the market. And the ones that are sometimes are underdosed, sometimes are missing certain things. So all of these doses I've used from studies that I've read and I tried to get, like I said, I've tried to get something that hits almost every possible pathway. So with that said, I'm extremely excited for this product to come out. I hope you guys are going to try it. Um, I recommend you can even take this product before you work out. If you want like crazy, crazy pumps, take it with a carbohydrate meal. Uh, PJ actually did it last week and he called me and, and told me, he's like, Brian, this is freaking awesome. <laughs> so uh, I'm really excited to try it myself. And uh, if you have questions for me, you can reach me on my Instagram at the Gorilla Chemist. For me, Chief Science Officer Blackstone Labs, signing out. Tune in next time for another episode of Behind the Muscle.